centuries, Italian culture has exerted an undeniable influence on the art of all European people. This manifest influence, however, is not one way only. Foreign artists react to the stimuli coming from Italy, perceiving them through the filter of their own culture. In this way, the potential expressiveness is amplified, and the ability of humanity to increase its knowledge of the universe through the arts is enhanced. These relationships become a dynamic exchange of cultural information and bring mutual enrichment. The Futurist movement, among the most important of the 20th century, has completely renewed the potential of artistic expression. It inserts not only in the creative imaginary the use of completely new expressive means and media, but comes to imagine a work of art that spills over from its physical limits, expanding into the surrounding space, and multimedia environments that exploited in an innovative way the possibilities given by the use of electrical power. Marco Bagnoli is an artist who in his creative path can translate into an extremely contemporary language both the legacy of the art of the past and the innovation brought by modern technology. In this way, he achieves to bring us awareness of the continuity of our existence in time. He creates a multidimensionality of knowledge in which different aspects of the aesthetic messages conveyed by various realities can be met. For example, the study of Leonardo da Vinci, Heads of an Old Man and a Youth, becomes for Bagnoli a motif which leads to a dilation of the concept of ego, in which man cannot be any more a prisoner of the only condition of life he did not choose. This is evident in the 1989 work Vortice dei Volti. It is a solid of revolution which shows negative profiles of a Leonardesque old man and a Michelangelo-esque youth. The idea is brought to the extreme in the 1992 work Colui che sta, a sculpture built with cylinders of different radius that rotate and balance along an axis, developing the outline of a double profile when struck by a light beam. The shadow touches a corner of the room and the figure is divided. The various techniques used by Bagnoli in his projections of shadows recall the works of Bruno Monari. The latter was the first, with his 1946 work Concavo Convesso, to create spaces where the shadows of a bent sheet of industrial mesh on the walls of a square room create an environment of light in which we find a double aspect of matter and an evanishing expansion of the dematerialized object. From the use of shadows, Monari's work develops to conceive in 1953 the Proiezione a luce polarizzata the first video installations. Unari continues in this way to dematerialize the body of the artwork, bringing the image more and more towards an essence of spirituality. It is this aspect that Bagnoli collects and projects toward the future. We can also identify the lessons of Romolo Romani, one of the first futurists, in the way Bagnoli structures space through the intersections of diagonals, symbolizing infinity. Both artists furthermore share an intense search for a spiritual identity. The artist perhaps more influential in the work of Bagnoli is the Pontormo. The direct connection with this artist is evident in Noli Metange, a complex projection displayed at the 47th Biennale of Venice in 1997. A structure at the center of four columns throws on each of these the ephemeral image of a figure with the likeness of the statue we see in Pontormo's painting, Giuseppe in Egitto. The same image materializes on top of the central structure in a parabolic mirror. From this meeting in space and time originates this series of works in which Bagnoli starts using mirrors. Pontormo's work is important for the visual search of Bagnoli, 
also in the inspiration and interpretation that he has had from the painting San Giovanni Evangelista e San Michel Arcangelo. Here, Bagnoli identifies an hermetic parallelism between the knee of St. Michael and the saucer weights held by an angel. He told me, I showed you a picture of Pontormo, the San Michele Arcangelo. I have indicated the scales and balance from the grasp of that being crushed under his foot. He grabs the mirror bow and turns it toward us. But clearly there, Pontormo did not paint a reflected figure. He does not know who we are. The angel's golden knee demonstrates its Apollonian essence. We are in fact struck by its beauty, annihilated by the vision of God and by his question, Who are you? Bagnoli also argues that a work of the past can become a channel even in the present, bearing the same force and witness. It too, however, must find its way and the point of contact. The contemporaneity and relevance of the work of Bagnoli manifest themselves in his visual research through interaction and interest in cultures, such as the Indian one, which until recently were considered too distant. He says, Determined by a generical homogeneity, the East can not longer exercise in many ways the dark and faraway idea that it represented in a more or less recent past. Visual art, through its universal expression, allows communication with all people, despite language barriers, and therefore plays an important role in facilitating a reciprocal understanding and mutual respect.